Okay, so the recording has started. So let's uh, go ahead, we will pray, uh, and then begin to discuss more about today's topic, uh, which is fasting. Okay, so I'd like to request someone, if you haven't prayed in a while uh, or in this class, you could unmute and pray, please, anyone? Okay. Yeah, Sitkinu. Uh, Sitkinu, uh, I am just thinking maybe someone else, if you don't mind, because uh, it, it's been a while. I haven't heard uh, the voices of other students. Okay, ma'am. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for your understanding. I just wanted someone else to take up. I don't want to call anyone's name because I don't know. Maybe, you know, you're in a place where it's there's a lot of noise or something you may not be comfortable so if someone volunteers that would be great okay. yeah, yes yes Subhashish, please go ahead oh sorry uh was it elisha yeah elisha please okay yeah. Our Heavenly Father, we want to bless you and praise your holy name for this moment of our lives, Father. We pray, commit our class into your hands, O God. It is our prayer that we take absolute control and direct our path in the name of Jesus. Father, your word says that wherever there is an entrance of your word, there is an illumination. Father, as we are about to study your word, may you enlighten our minds and bring an illumination in our thoughts in the name of Jesus. Father, cause us to understand and practically be able to, to undertake or to implement whatever that we discuss here in our lives in the name of Jesus. We pray and we give you praise and honor for answering our prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you so much, Elisha. Okay. Uh, so we come to this topic on fasting. Um, since this subject is about prayer, you know, we might wonder what does fasting have to do with prayer? But uh, definitely, you know, fasting is very closely associated with prayer. It strengthens us uh, as we fast, and uh, it's not just fasting. You know, fa fa uh, praying with fasting. That is what is effective. So we could talk about fasting uh, for various reasons and fasting, which is disconnected with prayer. Uh, that has its own benefits, you know. And the world out there is researching all the benefits of of fasting. Uh, so fasting in itself, um, you know, that that's something that we're not talking about just fasting. But what we are talking about is we are talking about praying with fasting, which makes our prayer life and our prayer journey more effective. So we're going to look at how fasting is helpful uh, in a spiritual sense. And that is the focus of our discussion. And today's subject, uh, it will just the introduction of fasting there's so much more that we have to study about it so we might take the next class or maybe even uh, the next two classes to complete the subject of fasting so what is it what is fasting you know we talked about prayer and we said that in our lives uh, if we can grow to a place where we can regulate okay uh, or or have like a strict um, way of doing prayer where you know, we have a schedule, uh, we make sure that we're engaging in prayer. That is a discipline, isn't it? Whatever we, we uh, are able to control, closely control, it becomes a discipline in our lives. And we know that prayer is beneficial and therefore it has to be a part of our lives. And so we discipline ourselves for prayer. In the same way, fasting is also a spiritual discipline that uh, we must incorporate into our lives uh, and that 
uh, you know, this will this will enrich us. This will strengthen us. And we see several uh, scriptures that will shed light on this. Who is the one who talked about fasting? You know, there are many uh, people in in the Bible, but for us, it's very very uh, uh, important to see Jesus's views on fasting. And we see that Jesus himself uh, advocated fasting. Matthew chapter nine, verses fourteen through seventeen. Uh, can somebody read it, please? Matthew chapter nine, verses fourteen through seventeen. Okay. Anyone you have access to okay, Matthew chapter 9, verse 14 to 17. Yes, yes. Then, the, then the disciple of John came to him, saying, Why do we and the Pharisee fast often, but your disciples do not fast? And Jesus said to them, Can the friends of the bridegroom mourn as long as the bridegroom is, in, is with them? But the days will come. When the bridegroom will be taken away from them and they will fast. No one puts a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old garment, for the patch pulls away from the garment and the tear is made worse. Nor do they put new wine into old wineskin, or else the wineskins break, the wine will spill, and the wineskins are ruined. But they put new wine into new wine skin, and both are preserved. Yes, thank you, thank you so much, Zelitomi. So you see here, uh, Jesus was questioned uh, by people who noticed John's disciples fasting, and they asked him, you know, "How come your disciples don't fast?" But Jesus said, "Look, there will come a time right now because he was with them." Um, you know, he did not he did not insist that they fast, but he did say that once uh, he would be gone, that people all his all his disciples would fast. So Jesus is talking about fasting just as much as he he said in this manner you pray. He did indicate that his disciples would also fast. So we, being his disciples, we must have fasting as part of our seeking God. Okay, uh, And in his teachings, uh, Jesus did say, when you pray, pray like this. Similarly, uh, there are, I've heard sermons whose title is, when you fast, which is to say that we are supposed to fast. It's not if you fast. For a believer, uh, it is when you fast because fa fasting is very much part of our spiritual discipline. Jesus also talked about a proper way of fasting. Remember, in some passages, uh, the references are given here. We won't read them though. Matthew 6, 16 to 18. Again, Luke 18, uh, verses 9 through 14, where Jesus says that when we are fasting, um, that we must not appear like we are uh, really afflicting ourselves and you know things are so difficult and desperate for us instead to to not let others even know that you are actually uh, you're doing this for the lord you're seeking god in this way so just the way he said when you pray you know, don't go out there and like the pharisees make a show of it similarly when we fast, we're not here to make a show of it that ah, I'm fasting, look at this, you know, uh, God, God is going to answer me because I have fasted like this and like that. So it's not to make a show, but it's similar to prayer where we are consecrating ourselves in a very private way unto the Lord. Uh, we also fast in a private way and we know that God is the one who sees whatever we, we go through as we fast then God will reward us openly. And also, Jesus said how, uh, like you oil, oil yourself. Or in other, you know, other words, uh, don't make yourself look so desperate and needy when you are 
fasting, but do it unto the Lord, do it joyfully, uh, and let that be an act of worship. So that's the manner in which we need to come before the Lord. So fasting is a part of a believer's spiritual discipline. And this is something we must develop. Now here at Bible College, uh, since uh, you're all joining online, you know, you don't have uh, you don't have that, but here when we have our in-person, on-campus uh, classes, we have every Friday, we set aside for fasting. So all the students, they fast. Okay, and uh, post uh, 1 p.m., we generally have a prayer session every Friday where the students get together. You know, there's a uh, time of worship, there's a time of ministry of the word, and there's a time of uh, intercession that takes place. And fasting, uh, you know, Friday is that day when you kind of uh, set aside for, for seeking the Lord along with fasting. Okay, uh, Yes, classes go on as usual, but uh, fasting is very much a part of the training that uh, you know, is given to students. Uh, and uh, I know Bible College students, three years, right? Uh, those who have stayed with us and studied three years, uh, completed their bachelors. This is something that they learn. Some of them, they don't uh, have this as a part of their spiritual discipline. But once they come to college, they pick it up. They develop in this spiritual discipline of fasting as well. But know that the fasting that we're talking about, it's not starving. There's a difference. If we just skip food, if we just, uh, uh, you know, let go, give up some some sort of uh, pleasure, uh, and we think, yeah, okay, I've done my part now. God, you bless me. But that in itself is not what God is desiring. But, you know, we, we are here to seek God. So fasting is a part of seeking God. That's how it should be. So fasting is to seek God. So there's always a prayer associated with, with fasting. So a prayer or a worship, or, uh, or all of those things, because then the fasting is meaningful in the spiritual sense. So fasting is a discipline that you and I can uh, develop. And uh, Jesus talked about it. And he did expect his disciples to fast and pray. Now, talking about fasting, you know, we will touch on uh, very many aspects of it. So let's just take it, you know, one by one. Uh, now, we've understood it's essential that uh, it is something that we do from our hearts as worship unto the Lord. Uh, we don't make a big show of it. Uh, and uh, here's the next thing. Fasting can be partial or it can be absolute. So it really depends. It really depends on what we have uh, committed to do unto the Lord. So there are certain fasts, which are known as absolute fasts, uh, in which uh, one would not eat anything, right? Or, or even drink anything, because we see uh, Moses do that when he is encountering the presence of God, uh, you know, in uh, 40 days and 40 nights, we know that he didn't eat anything, he didn't drink anything. But that's something really supernatural, uh, because, uh, you know, if you, if you, uh, generally see like you know 40 day fast and all that uh you you see that people don't eat anything but they do drink water and the inference that is taken from jesus's fast jesus also he didn't eat anything but uh people derive that he probably drank water so a human body uh to go without food and water food and water for 40 days can be it's actually uh, medically you know a very difficult thing so i've heard of people go without food and water uh, for maybe up to a three day period but not beyond that if there's a 40 day fast or a 21 day fast people generally go without food but they do drink water right so absolute fast absolute fast uh, we do use the term absolute fast for uh, you know no food no water or it could also refer to no food Okay, uh, so absolute fast. Partial fast. Partial fast is uh, uh, generally when some foods are allowed. Okay, so Daniel is a Daniel's fast. People go by that. 
uh, Daniel, if you recall, he did not eat anything that gave him pleasure. So he did partake of the uh, assigned food for him uh, in Babylon. Uh, but he just said, give us, give us basic, give us uh, vegetables, give us water, and that should be sufficient. So there was a, uh, a choice of foods. And why did Daniel do that? We know that Daniel did it because uh, it's likely that the choicest foods of Babylon were, were uh, dedicated to gods and you know, uh, there was uh, pagan worship associated with that. So he did not want to touch those foods. He only wanted to have foods you know, that were consecrated uh, unto the Lord. So maybe that was the reason why he uh, did not pick you know, meats and uh, certain other kind of foods. He just picked the food which uh, likely was not given to uh, worship of other gods. So he just managed on those those items and uh, we, we saw how uh, he and his friends, you know, the people, the uh, people of God, they uh, were, still did very well in health and in performance as compared to the Babylonians. So Daniel's fast is generally referred to as the partial fast because he did eat, he did drink, but he just uh, uh, left out certain certain category of food items. Okay, so we can either do an absolute fast or we can do a partial fast uh, as we decide, you know, in our hearts unto the Lord. We can also fast individually or we can fast in groups. Now, individually, you remember when David lost his son. He goes, he shuts himself and he's alone. Like he's not eating or drinking anything uh, when his son is sick. Uh, but when the child dies, okay, uh, he kind of gets up, he comes back, he eats and, and uh, you know, he goes about his life. So individually he fasted when Paul, uh, Saul encountered God's presence on the road to Damascus. He couldn't eat either, right? So he didn't eat till uh, Ananias, uh, Ananias, he came and he ministered to Paul. So he also individually he was fasting for a while. So as individuals, we can just keep it in our hearts that okay, God, you know, I want to fast up to you uh, and uh, you know make a prayer. And individually, we can fast, or as a group, you know, we find that uh, uh, the elders in the Church of Antioch together. They prayed, they fasted together. So can we do this as a team? Can we do this as a family? Can we do this as a congregation? Yes, you have examples in the in the word of God where people fasted in groups. Uh, so even Ezra, right, he calls for a fast and you have an entire community fasting together. So fasting can be done individually or a group of people can also fast together. So the key thing, the main thing, however, you know, as we've been saying so far, it's not just about fasting, okay? Or if we are just uh, abstaining from food and drink, we may well, might as well call it starving, okay, or dieting, because uh, there is no spiritual implication to that. But when our fasting is engaged uh, or rather associated with prayer, that is when it is of spiritual value. So fasting must be associated with prayer. You may also uh, say that we can spend time in God's word. So when we are fasting, uh, it, it is good that we take time reading God's word, meditating on scripture, uh, and you know just worshiping the Lord, seeking God. So fasting is seeking God. And other things associated with the that our prayer and reading God's word. So we must combine these and that's when, you know, it is really meaningful. Okay. So how long does one need to fast? You no, know, it can vary. Again, in the Bible, in our notes here, there are so many examples. You can look it all up. Uh, that we could fast for a day. We could fast for you know, three days, three nights. Esther is an example. She called for a fast three days and three nights. And uh, people fasted along with her. So it can be done for three days or it can be done for seven days. It can be done for 14 days, 21 days, 40 days. Or you pick another uh, example. Uh, some people only go by the 
the numbers given in the Bible. But what if you choose to fast for five days? And what if you choose to fast for six days or 18 days? You know, it, it, I think the key is to be led by the Spirit of God, uh, which is what makes our fasting acceptable to God, uh, rather than you know going by a formula. Because uh, I've also seen people who do the Daniel fast, uh, but they get preoccupied in, okay, what are the foods which Daniel ate? And what are the foods that Daniel didn't eat? Okay, let's make a list of that. And what are the recipes uh, that can be uh, made from, you know, by eliminating certain foods? So they are more caught up in the recipes. Uh, so, but that's not what it is, right? Fasting is seeking God. So why are we, why are we uh, refraining ourselves from either completely or absolutely uh, not indulging in eating or partially? Uh, refraining ourselves from food because you're giving your attention to God. If your attention is not on God and it's on food or skipping food, again, we have missed the point. And how long should we do it? However long the Lord puts it on your heart and you know, uh, it's possible. So these are some basics that uh, we, have, we have now looked at about fasting. So why should we fast? This is in, in a just we will look at the benefits but yes we are going to look at the benefits of fasting thoroughly um, you know as we go forward so you know just, just what are some of the main benefits you know it is a way of expressing our repentance it is a way of exp expressing our repentance like even in the bible when you see uh, communities repenting unto the lord Depending unto the Lord, you know, we we find that they they did not eat food. You know, they put on sackcloth. Uh, we say they 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 tore their clothes. These are all expressions. Right? These are all expressions of coming before God and saying, God, we are sorry, uh, or, or you know, God, these things have happened in our lives, and you know, we are repenting. We are repenting. Uh, we are giving ourselves back to you. So, fasting can be a way of expressing one's repentance. Okay? And uh, so we could just seek the Lord and tell him that God, you know, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the sin or I'm sorry for uh, the sins of my land. I'm sorry for the wrongdoing of my, my family or my team. So you come before the Lord with fasting. So in other words, you know, you humble yourself. So what is fasting? Fasting is you're humbling yourself before the presence of God. So it expresses one's repentance. Uh, and so you know, if we want to see God and repent. Fasting is something really good that we can, uh, we can adopt. Now, it strengthens our focus. You know, I've heard this said many times that fasting is not easy. Okay, ask anyone. Everyone will tell you that, hey, uh, anything but fasting. Nobody loves to fast. And if they do, they probably have some goals that they are working towards. But it's a challenging thing to do to let go of, of uh, food. Um, but when we fast, you know, in a way, uh, we are working our will because our will is getting trained to say no, no, I'm not eating now, no, I'm not eating this, you know. So, so you're shifting your focus every time from the things that give you pleasure or things that make you comfortable to other things. So, you're training your will. So, when you're fasting uh, for spiritual reasons, for seeking God, we are training our will, and our will is saying no. I'm giving this time to God, you know. Uh, yes, I know this is lunch time, but I'm going to spend some time in the word of God. I'm going to spend some time worshipping the Lord. I'm going to spend some time singing right now. You know? So our will is being shifted. Uh, it's being trained. Okay? And our focus is directed towards God. So what focus is being strengthened? Our focus upon God is being strengthened and our focus on other things is being weakened. So uh, uh, I was going to say something, but uh, you know my thought process went elsewhere. But I was going to say that I've heard people say this uh, that you know when you fast, 
the cry of your heart becomes louder than the cry of your stomach. Okay. Uh, but your will comes to that. Initially, yes, we are concerned so much about our stomach. Oh, I'm feeling hungry. I'm feeling tired. You know, I, I, I can't do this. But the cut of our hearts, which is to say, you know, God, I'm seeking you. I'm pursuing you. Or, you know, I repent of this. Or, God, I want to see a breakthrough in this area. Or, I want to see my brother healed. Or, you know, whatever is the cry of our hearts, that becomes stronger. Our focus is strengthened on those matters as compared to your growling stomach. Okay? So, fasting strengthens our focus. Our will, our will becomes strong. We are able to say, no, you know, I am not going to worry about that. I am going to trust God. You know, I am not going to worry about, you know, my, my food right now or my interest. Yeah, it's going towards all the nice things that I could be eating, but no. I'm going to focus on the word. So your will, your focus is strengthened in many ways towards the things of God. And you know, anyone who practices uh, fasting would tell you that indeed our will has been strengthened. Our, our, our uh, determination for spiritual things, for the things of God, you know, our passion for the things of God. It really is re renewed and revived when we fast unto the Lord. Uh, and also, you know, in strengthening of focus, we could also say that when we are giving so much attention to God and God's word, many things become clear from God's word. Many things, uh, you know, the direction that we must move with, that becomes clearer to us. So fasting has all these spiritual benefits. And fasting also increases our spiritual intensity. Okay? Uh, so by that, we could uh, say that, you know, our faith is strengthened when we fast. You remember in Matthew 17, when the disciples come to the Lord Jesus, verses 20 to 21, and, uh, you know, they say, oh, why couldn't we cast the demon out? Jesus says, you know, this kind will not come out except by prayer and fasting. So how do prayer and fasting help us? So prayer and fasting will strengthen the spirit man. They will strengthen our faith. Okay. So when our spirit man is strengthened, when our faith is strengthened, and then you know we go and uh, serve God or minister or cast out a demon or something, you know we can see because of that increased focus and 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 faith, we can see uh, you know God's God's power being released. So it also kind of increases the, the intensity, you could say. We already have faith, but it increases our faith. It increases our uh, passion for God. It increases, you know, uh, the, the, the spiritual uh, aspects in us. So it increases our intensity. And uh, I, I again, I've heard somebody say that, you know, it's like, these are all analogies, okay? Don't go by it. Don't uh, take it uh, technically. You know, where is the verse and scripture for it and all? But I, I understand what they're saying. So uh, somebody uh, said that you know your spirit rises above when you fast. Your spirit kind of takes charge. It takes charge. Okay, uh, and you know it's true because something about seeking God through fasting strengthens us in such a way that. We feel that strength and the spirit is able to decide as compared to your soul. Your fleshly soul might say, hey, no, let's let this go. You know, I don't want to go and pray now. I don't want to go to church now and be part of that meeting. Or, you know, I don't want to set aside time uh, right now. I'm not feeling fine emotionally. But when we have this discipline of you know, prayer as well as fasting, so somewhere the spirit overrides the the uh, uh, suggestions of the soul. So that strength of the spirit can come in when we are fasting. Okay. So these are benefits. These are benefits that we can reap from fasting. So I'm just uh, trying to help us understand that this is really, really useful. So we will experience that that our spirit becomes stronger, the intensity becomes stronger, our passion for God becomes stronger. Okay, develops discipline. You know, needless to say, anything that is hard, 
you know you can't play the guitar but you played for 6 months same two three chords obviously if you're closing your eye you'll do it discipline over time discipline is like whether you like it or not it's become a part of you brushing our teeth we don't think about it right we just wake up go discipline we don't think oh, i feel like brushing and don't feel like brushing it's not about our feelings anymore you wake up you have to brush so it's like that it becomes a part of us it really develops you know that that strength uh, uh, within us where we know okay uh, yeah this is the right thing to do and that's i shouldn't be doing that so when we are fasting you know discipline regarding the things of god uh we will develop that because our spirit man is becoming stronger okay and also of course the aspect of self control okay self control it's so hard to fast so your will gets exercised and you're saying no to the things that give you pleasure so obviously self control is is uh, developed and we also know that self control is a fruit of the spirit so when we are demonstrating self control it's like the character of god right it's coming from the character of god so self control uh, is something that will uh, become evident when we fast and pray and when we have self control the things of the flesh i already said that you know we are able to override the suggestions of the soul suggestions of the flesh uh, and we can do the right thing because our will is now uh, we have exercised that self control Okay. it deepens consecration it deepens consecration see we talked about consecration dedicating ourselves unto the lord now fasting along with prayer uh, that is also a way of setting ourselves apart for god setting ourselves aside for god so one example which is given in our notes here is paul and barnabas before they went on to the missionary journey uh, they were dedicated they were dedicated unto the lord to do this work the special calling this ministry which god had given them but what what was the the initiation of that you know the time of prayer and fasting of the elders of the church of antioch okay so that's how uh, uh, they the elders consecrated themselves they gave themselves to the lord they ministered to the lord and as a result you know god uh spoke to them and he said okay now that you all are you you have sought me in this way set aside for me paul and barnabas for the work of the ministry and they were also specially dedicated they were commissioned for this special work so it really deepens our commitment or our consecration unto the lord so you see there are all these benefits so in a way you know spiritual maturity spiritual growth we talk about okay when we are Uh, uh given to god's word right over a period of time we can see so many changes ourselves in ourselves because the world has changed us okay. let's say um uh, we now have learned the importance of prayer okay prayer is a part of my life every day over a period of time we look at ourselves we'll be amazed oh wow i'm a different person now because prayer has changed us okay or relating with god in such an intentional way it has changed us in the same way fasting what does fasting do fasting changes us we just saw the effects that has on our focus on our intensity you know on our uh, uh, on our consecration on our discipline right uh, or on the the kind of expression that we have if it is repentance then yes it helps us walk humble usually fasting is i told you referred to as humble ourselves humble ourselves before the presence of the lord so what is the intention of fasting it brings a certain growth it brings a certain change in me that is why i should fast okay not so that others can say that oh wow this person has self control they have fasted 40 days they have fasted 80 days you know it's not for other reasons but the primary reason for us to fast is to seek the lord and at the same time to experience changes in ourselves 
Okay, so uh, that is the the value of fasting. I'm just coming to the comments here. Okay, okay, Priya's comment there. So, and uh, okay, sorry. Yeah, Sipkina, that's fine. Okay, yeah, Sipkina is not continuing on the call today. All right, that's fine. Okay, now let's just move on. So fasting is meant to change us and not to change God. Now, I remember this one incident, and this was uh, uh, when even I didn't have much understanding about fasting, actually. Uh, and I had a friend of mine, we, we used to encourage each other in the Lord and all. So she was going through uh, a particular situation. I remember that attitude, you know, with which we we uh, sought God. And I know God is gracious and he, he is very loving and kind. So he definitely answered that prayer. But uh, it was more like, you know, she wanted certain opportunities in her life. Uh, and uh, she was not at all good at music. Okay, but she wanted to do something in music. And that that uh, instructor was not giving her the opportunity to, uh, uh, you know, play the instrument or something. So for that, she decided that, hey, I'm going to fast 21 days because uh, that is what I want. I don't want all these other things. But it was quite clear that she didn't have capacity in that area. Uh, but she literally wanted, it was as if, you know, I'm not going into the details of it, but it was literally like she wanted God to change his mind uh, about what she needs to do. So with that kind of an attitude, it was an extended fast. I don't even remember how. Yeah, maybe, maybe 21 days, I don't know. So, but an extended fast. And, uh, you know, even I kind of uh, went along with it and I said, yeah, yeah, you fast. So she did it. She actually did it. She pushed herself to to uh, fast. and uh, But at the end of it, did she uh, get those music opportunities? No. She, even till today, she's not, nothing music you know, a little bit of music, yes, but not the way she wanted to get into music. It never happened because she didn't have the aptitude for it. So the point I'm trying to make is, see, sometimes we think that fasting is going to change God's mind. If I can fast 21 days, it's like God will get irritated and he will just give me what I want. But fasting doesn't change God. Fasting changes us. So that is the goal of fasting. Fasting is meant to change us. Uh, and everything that we have discussed about prayer so far, you know, we said that uh, we, when, what is effective prayer? We spoke about effective prayer. We spoke about believing prayer. When is it possible to pray a believing prayer? When we are praying in the will of God. That's what Jesus also taught us, isn't it? We are praying according to his will. When we pray according to his will, uh, and the Apostle John writes, he hears us. God hears us when we are in line with his will. So similarly, when we fast, it is important for us to uh, uh, go by God's will. Okay? We, we, don't, we should not think that just because I'm fasting, I can change God's will. That would be the wrong motivation and the wrong intention to fast. Fasting is for us to be changed in accordance to God's will. So at the end of the uh, really right fast, I'm sure, suppose we were saying something else before we started the fast. At the end of the fast, hopefully, you know, our hearts would have aligned uh, uh, themselves to the will of God, the purpose of God. So that is the uh, meaning of a true fast. And Fasting is meant to move us and position us into a place where we should be in order to receive from God. So fasting does a work in us and we must uh, receive it and welcome that work that fasting does. So what are all the kinds of fasts? So far, you know, I have only mentioned refraining from food uh, as uh, in my uh, sharing. But you see, fasting is about committing ourselves to God, isn't it? It's about seeking the Lord. It's about giving our attention to God. It's about saying no to the things of the world that want our attention. 
so it need not only be about food now let's say for example i am able to fast okay i can skip two meals a day and uh, keep doing that for let's say 40 days i can do it i can just have one meal every day but what if you know i am addicted to uh, uh, addicted to my phone and i'm addicted to other things which have my attention okay so how does how does having self control in the area of food and not having self control in some other area i just gave you one example but it could be something else that we have no self control over some weakness of us personal weakness so fasting is really showing our commitment to god you know our pursuit of god by saying no to the things that have our attention so for example if i say okay uh how about you know i also all my time is going on social media how about i fast that time and i give that time unto the lord it might be a very hard thing for me to do because my self control in that one area is very weak okay so Okay. Power issue here. No. Continue. I hope you can hear me now. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. I, okay. Thank you. Yes. So basically, I was saying. See, it's about it's about letting go of something that has your attention. So fasting need not necessarily be. Okay, thank you, thank you, Rubia. So fasting need not necessarily be only about food. So we could either refrain from food, or we could refrain from, uh, you know, certain kinds of food. Uh, I have some friends who, um, for an extended period, they just decided not to eat what they like. You know, some some of them they like sweets. Some of them, uh, one particular person, she loves sweets. but she said no i am not going to have that because i want to seek god so it's like you're letting go of something that you really want that is fasting so you may want to let go of certain types of food or certain activities i just gave you an example uh maybe your time on your phone or surfing the net or uh basically you sit down and figure out what is it for you and whatever that looks like for you whatever is taking away your attention to that activity you say hey i am not going to do this instead that time i am going to read the word or i am going to pray or or something to seek the lord so we can refrain from certain activities but the bible also talks about something called as the fasted life now if you uh, look at certain people in in the word of god you know you have samuel you have samson even jesus you know they were all people who were um, uh, dedicated to a nazarite vow okay a nazarite vow and in that nazarite uh, vow um, uh, there was something like the person who is taking up uh, that commitment they should not Uh, cut their hair. They should not uh, uh, drink anything, you know, which is from the grapes and the derivatives of grapes. So there were certain rules that the person had to follow. But why? Why was the uh, person? Why did the person need to follow that as a sign of consecration or a commitment you know, or a holiness, keeping holiness in their lives uh, for God? So that's the Nazarite vow. similar to the nazarite vow now we can be people who say okay in and through my life uh, i am going to follow a fasted life and in that fasted life you may have certain commitments unto the lord and say okay god i am not going to do this this and this throughout my life 
because it's my vow to you it's my consecration unto you so that's a fasted life but in a spiritual sense what does a fasted life look we will you know uh, touch upon that as we go forward uh, in our uh, study of fasting so i think i'll just pause here we have a couple of minutes and i'm sure you all have questions or some uh, comments so feel free you know you could just ask the questions doubts we can address that for now Huh. Yes, yes, Divya, please go ahead. Thank you, thank you, Pastor Nancy. Um, I have just uh, two questions. One is, mm -hmm. uh, like, you might have already addressed this, but I just wanted to know, like, uh, past, uh, like fasting for a particular reason, right? Uh, is it, um, is it uh, wrong? Um, because yeah ultimately as you said it is seeking god um so is it wrong if you're fasting for a particular reason and plus another thing is uh like uh, one person whom like uh i've heard of uh he used to sing very well and um he was doing uh, like in secular field and all he was invited but then um he came to know the lord and then he made a decision that he will not sing uh, secular music, only the uh, um, only uh, Christian songs. So, is that a fasted life? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Vivia. Um, good questions, both of them. Um, so, yeah. See, the first one. Yes, we are seeking the Lord, but when we're seeking God, it doesn't mean that you know we don't have any wants or needs, right? Uh, even when we pray, Jesus taught us to pray. Uh, um, give us this day our daily bread. So God is a God who meets our needs. So if we are fasting to receive provision or, uh, you know, freedom from some form of oppression or guidance, there can be some reason why we are fasting. There is nothing wrong with that. In fact, uh, if we go back to the examples uh, where mm, we, we saw Jesus before his ministry, he fasted, right, 40 days. So uh, I'm sure he, he would have fasted so that he can serve the Lord well. Uh, then you had Ezra who commanded the community to fast because they needed direction from God. Nehemiah, he fasted because he wanted to, uh, I mean, one is he was in grief. The other thing is obviously he wanted to know how to deal with the broken wall situation of his people. Esther, you know, they, they, there was a very uh, tumultuous time uh, for the Jews and uh, things could have gone really wrong for them. But she passed it for deliverance. So there is always a cause, Divya. Uh, at least most instances, uh, whatever I shared with you. Yes, we can just fast to worship the Lord. That's also fine. But if there is an attached need or a cause, it's fine, actually. There's nothing wrong with it. Okay, I hope okay. that answers the first part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yes. Okay, great. Great. Okay, great. So the second thing is that the individual who has uh, decided not to uh, sing secular songs, yeah, in a sense, yes, Divya, because it's not easy, right? He's done it all along, and now he has chosen not to sing secular songs, so it must be hard for him. So it does, uh, you could say, it comes in the category of a fasted life, but we'll see later on, fasted life is not just about letting go of something, uh, for God, but it's more than that. You now, Isaiah 58, we will see that entire passage how, what is the fast that the Lord has chosen, and you know, what attitude, uh, what lifestyle God is looking for. So, all that put together will help us live a fasted life, not just saying no to something we like. Okay, so I hope that answers your question yeah yeah got it yeah thank you thank you pastor yeah sure yeah sure no problem yes so yeah thank you thank you Vivia. thank you for that uh, any anything else at this point any questions that others may have also
Okay. So in case you just want to think about it, then please do. Uh, but we are going to continue on the same subject, right? So tomorrow, and hopefully, I think even next week, we will be touching on the same subject. So please do come with uh, you know your questions and comments. So let's close uh, right now. And I would like to request someone to please uh, say a word of prayer. Can I? Ah, uh, yes, please, yes, Divya. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for teaching us, Father, um, regarding fasting, Lord, and the right attitudes, Father, that we need to um, uh, have, Father, uh, not to uh, let others know or not to, Father, uh, impress people, Father, Lord, but uh, help us, Father, that our heart attitudes be uh, to seek you, Lord, to, uh, Father, Lord, to pour out our hearts to you, Father, Lord, let us uh, fasting lord uh, we always um, uh, associated lord with uh, prayers father lord we pray father lord let us uh, align our um, uh, will father to your will father lord uh, help us father that we uh, as we pray and as we fast father lord you give us lord those um, gr the grace that we need father lord the uh, fruits of the spirit father that we need father lord how we are assured uh, father of all uh, those uh, fruits father in our life and uh, father we draw near to you father so we uh, pray each and every one of us father who want to draw closer to you father who want to have a deeper walk with you lord you enable us father you speak to our hearts in which ways father which uh what kind of disciplines father we need to inculcate in our lives father lord i pray father for each and every student father i uh, pray for um pastor nancy father as well uh for the enabling of the holy spirit for the anointing and the equipping of the holy spirit in our lives father lord uh, we bless pastor nancy father lord um we pray for all his uh, needs father uh, may you provide according to your riches and glory we thank you and praise you in jesus precious name we pray amen amen, amen. thank you thank you to thank you everyone uh, really grateful to be able to teach your class and I trust that everything we are learning uh, that it will impact us right in some way and that we will uh, be stronger for the Lord so uh, thank you for taking the time uh, and uh, God bless you for all your efforts really appreciate it keep continuing it's awesome we've reached almost the end of three months one more month to go to complete this semester so uh, excellent excellent work everyone Take care. Have a blessed day. See you tomorrow.